വെൽക്കം ടു എഡ്യൂപീഡിയ വേൾഡ് ഡോട്ട് കോം ദിസ് ഇസ് സോം ജജ നായർ യുവർ ഓൺലൈൻ ബയോളജി ട്യൂട്ടർ ചാപ്റ്റർ ഇസ് എക്കോ സിസ്റ്റം ഇൻ ദിസ് വീഡിയോ വി ആർ ഗോയിങ് ടു ഡിസ്കസ് അബൌട്ട് എക്കോളജിക്കൽ സക്സഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഡിഫറെന്റ് ന്യൂട്രിയൻ സൈക്കിൾസ് എക്കോളജിക്കൽ സക്സഷൻ ആൻഡ് ഇമ്പോർട്ടന്റ് ക്യാരക്ടറിസ്റ്റിക്സ് ഓഫ് ഓൾ കമ്മ്യൂണിറ്റീസ് ഇസ് ദാറ്റ് കോമ്പോസിഷൻ ആൻഡ് സ്ട്രക്ചർ കോൺസ്റ്റന്റ്ലി ചേഞ്ച് ഇൻ റെസ്പോൺസ് ടു ദ ചേഞ്ചിങ് എൻവയോൺമെന്റൽ കണ്ടീഷൻസ് ദിസ് ചേഞ്ച് ഇസ് ഓർഡർലി ആൻഡ് സീക്വൻഷ്യൽ പാരൽ വിത്ത് ദ ചേഞ്ചസ് ഇൻ ദ ഫിസിക്കൽ എൻവയോൺമെന്റ് these changes lead finally to a community that is in near equilibrium with the environment and that is called a climax community ecological succession is the gradual process by which the ecosystem changes and develop over time nothing remains the same and habitats are constantly changing during succession some species colonize an area and their population become more numerous whereas population of other species has declined and even disappear the entire sequence of communities that successively change in a given area are called series the individual transitional communities are termed as seral stages or seral communities in the successive seral stages there is a change in the diversity of species of organism increase in the number of species and organisms as well as increase in the total biomass types of succession there are two main types of succession primary and secondary primary succession is the series of community changes which occur on an entirely new habitat which has never been colonized before for example a newly quarried rock face or sand dunes secondary succession is the series of community changes which takes place on a previously colonized but disturbed or damaged habitat for example after felling trees in a woodland land clearance or a fire this is a diagrammatic representation of a primary and a secondary succession succession of plant based on nature of the habitat whether it is water or very wet areas or it is on a very dry areas succession of plant is called hydrarch or serarch respectively hydrarch succession takes place in wetter areas and the successional series progress from hydric to the mesy condition as against this serarch succession takes place in dry areas and the series progresses from seric to mesy conditions hence both hydrarch and serarch successions lead to the medium water condition that is the mesy condition neither too dry that is seric nor too wet that is hydric this is the diagrammatic representation of hydrarch or serarch succession in both cases it will end up in the climax forest community that is a mesophytic condition pioneer species the species that invade a bare areas are called pioneer species in primary succession on rocks these are usually lichens which are able to secrete acid to dissolve rock helping in weathering and soil formation these later pave way to some very small plants like bryophytes which are able to toil cold in the small amount of soil there are with the time succeeded by bigger plants and after several more stages ultimately a stable climax forest community is formed the climax community remains stable as long as the environment remains unchanged with the time the xerophytic habitat gets converted into a mesophytic one in primary succession in water the pioneers are small phytoplankton they are replaced with time by free floating angiosperms then by rooted hydrophytes sedges grasses and finally the trees the climax again would be a forest with the time the water body is converted into land nutrient cycling the amount of nutrients such as carbon nitrogen phosphorus calcium etc present in the soil at any given time is referred to as the static state it varies in different kinds of ecosystems also on a seasonal basis what is important is to appreciate that nutrients which are never lost from the ecosystem that are recycled time and again indefinitely the movement of nutrient elements through the various components of an ecosystem is called nutrient cycling another name of nutrient cycling is biogeochemical cycles here bio means living organism geo means rocks air water nutrient cycles are of two types gaseous and sedimentary reservoirs for nutrient cycles the reservoir for gaseous type of nutrient cycle like 
nitrogen and carbon cycle exist in the atmosphere and for the sedimentary cycle example sulfur and phosphorus cycle the reservoir is located on earth crust environmental factors example soil moisture ph temperature etc regulate the rate of release of nutrients into the atmosphere the function of the reservoir is to meet with the deflect which occurs due to the imbalance in the rate of influx and efflux this is a diagrammatic representation of how nutrient cycles work nitrogen cycle the nitrogen cycle describes how nitrogen moves between plants animals bacteria the atmosphere that is the air and soil in the ground nitrogen forms about 78% of the air on earth but plants do not use nitrogen directly from the air this is because nitrogen itself is unreactive and cannot be used by green plants to make protein nitrogen gas therefore needs to be converted into nitrate compounds in the soil by nitrogen fixing bacteria in soil root nodules or lichen processes in nitrogen cycle first one nitrogen fixation Fixation is the first step in the process of making nitrogen usable by plants. Here the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen that is N2 into reactive compounds such as ammonia that is NH3 and nitrate NO3. The second step is nitrification. This is the process by which the ammonium gets changed into nitrates by bacteria. Nitrates are what the plants can then absorb. The two groups of microorganisms involved in the process are nitrosomas and nitrobacter nitrosomas oxidize ammonia to nitrite and the nitrobacter oxidize nitrite to nitrate and then the third step is assimilation this is how plants get nitrogen they absorb nitrates from soil into their roots then the nitrogen get used in amino acid nucleic acid and chlorophyll next step is ammonification this is the part of the decaying process When a plant or animal dies, decomposers like fungi and bacterium turn the nitrogen back into ammonia, so it can re-enter the nitrogen cycle. The last step is denitrification. Extra nitrogen in the soil gets put back out into the air. There are special bacteria that perform this task as well. What is nitrogen fixation, and what are the different types of nitrogen fixation? Nitrogen fixation is the conversion of atmospheric nitrogen into the reactive compounds such as ammonia nitrate. The breaking of the bonds between nitrogen atoms requires a great deal of energy and occurs naturally in two primary ways that are abiotic and biotic nitrogen fixation. The first one abiotic nitrogen fixation. Here nitrate is the result of high energy fixation in the atmosphere from lightning and cosmic radiations. In this process N2 is combined with oxygen to form nitrogen oxide such as NO and NO2 which are carried to the earth's surface in rainfall as nitric acid that is HNO3 This high energy fixation accounts for approximately 10% of nitrate entering the nitrogen cycle Then biological nitrogen fixation Biological fixation is accomplished by a series of soil microorganisms such as aerobic and anaerobic bacteria. Often symbiotic bacteria such as Rhizobia are found at the roots of legumes and provide a direct source of ammonia to the plants. In root nodules of these legumes, the bacteria split molecular nitrogen into two free nitrogen atoms which combine with hydrogen to form ammonia that is NH3. The following plants are common example of legumes like like clover, soybeans, chickpeas, alfalfa. The breakdown of these legumes by bacteria during ammonification actually returns excess nitrogen not utilized by the plants to the surrounding soil. Therefore, to promote sustainable soil fertility, it is beneficial to use these agriculture crops in rotation with the other plants such as corn that are more profitable. but deplete the available nitrogen in the soil some free living aerobic bacteria such as acetobacter and anaerobic bacteria like clostridium freely fix nitrogen in the soil and in aquatic environments some members of photosynthetic cyanobacteria fix nitrogen in aquatic environment as well 
This is a diagrammatic representation of the nitrogen cycle. Carbon cycle. When you study the composition of living organisms, carbon constitutes 49% of the dry weight of organisms and is next only to water. If we look at the total quantity of the global carbon, we find that 71% of carbon is found dissolved in oceans. These oceanic reservoirs regulates the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Fossil fuel also represent a reservoir of carbon. Carbon cycling occurs through atmosphere, ocean and through living and dead organisms. According to one estimate, 4 into 10 raised to 13 kg of carbon is fixed in the biosphere through photosynthesis annually. A considerable amount of carbon returns to the atmosphere as CO2 through respiratory activities of producers and consumers. Decomposers also contribute substantially to carbon dioxide pool by their processing of waste materials and dead organic matter of land or oceans. Some amount of fixed carbon is lost to sediments and removed from circulation. Burning of wood, forest fire and combustion of organic matter, fossil fuel, volcanic activity are additional sources for releasing carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Human activities have significantly influenced the carbon cycle. Rapid deforestation and massive burning of fossil fuel of energy and transport have significantly increased the rate of release of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. This is the diagrammatic representation of carbon cycle. Phosphorus cycle. Phosphorus is a major constituent of biological membranes, nucleic acid and cellular energy transfer systems. Many animals also need large quantities of these elements to make shells, bonds and teeth. The natural reservoir of phosphorus is rock which contain phosphorus in the form of phosphates. When the rocks are weathered, minute amounts of these phosphates dissolve in soil solution and are absorbed by the roots of the plants. Herbivores and other animals obtain these elements from plant. The waste product and dead organisms are decomposed by phosphate solubilizing bacteria and releasing this phosphorus to the ecosystem. This is a diagrammatic representation of the phosphorus cycle. Sulfur cycle. The sulfur cycle contains both atmospheric and terrestrial processes. Within the terrestrial portion, the cycle begins with weathering of rocks, releasing the stored sulfur. The sulfur then comes into contact with air, where it converted into sulfate, that is SO4. The sulfate is taken up by plants and microorganisms and is converted into organic forms. Animals then consume these organic forms through food they eat, thereby moving the sulfur through the food chain. As organisms die and decompose, some of the sulfur is again released as sulfate and some enters the tissue of microorganism. There are also a variety of natural sources that emit sulfur directly into the atmosphere, including volcanic eruptions. The breakdown of organic matter in swamps and tidal flats and the evaporation of water. Sulfur eventually settles back into the earth or comes down within the rainfall. This is the diagrammatic representation of sulfur cycle. Ecosystem services. Healthy ecosystems are the base for a wide range of economic, environmental and aesthetic goods and services. The product of ecosystem processes are named as ecosystem services. For example, Healthy forest ecosystems purify air and water, mitigate droughts and floods, cycle nutrients, generate fertile soils, provide wildlife habitat, maintain biodiversity, pollinate crops, provide storage site for carbon and also provide aesthetic, cultural and spiritual values. Though values of such services of biodiversity is difficult to determine, it seems reasonable to think the biodiversity should carry a hefty price tag. Thus, I am winding up the chapter. Thank you. In the next video, we will be moving toward the next chapter, the biodiversity and conservation.